Hello everyone, it's Ross Kelly, CEO and Realtor with Love and Drillton Investment Company, and this is Simply Vidalia, episode number 14. On today's episode, we're in the office of the Executive Director of the Downtown Vidalia Association, Ms. Paula Tu. Ms. Paula, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here with you this morning. Well, it's awesome, and I know that you've got an extremely uh, busy schedule, so thank you for carving out a little bit of time for us to come in and uh, film this episode of Simply Vidalia and to tell the viewing audience a little bit about the Downtown Vidalia Association and exactly what it is and what it does. Right. That's important for our community. It really is, and we're going to allow you to tell us all about it. So <laughs> yes. um, why don't you start off by telling us uh, DVA stands for Downtown Vidalia Association. Tell us exactly what the DVA is. Okay, the DVA was organized in the mid-80s as a membership organization. started off with just five or six members, and um, that continued to grow. Uh, the merchants downtown actually were in charge of putting uh, anything together that was done as a group. Uh, there was not a director. Um, then in the late 1989, the city of Idalia was designated a Main Street city, which was led by Ms. Rose Ledford, actually. And um, there was a number of people in the community that were business-oriented uh, and wanted to see the downtown grow. And it just grew from there, actually. And um, Ms. Ledford went to the state and made it possible for them to come in and do a historic district, which means the Main Street preservation ethics of Main Street. And um, from that, you had to have a full-time director. So in 1989, they had their first full executive director. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it, then it did really begin to grow. Um, I don't have all the names of those that have been directors over the years. Um, Main Street means we follow a four-point approach of organization, um, oh, excuse me, organization, economic restructuring, design, and economic development. And that four-point approach puts everyone into the same perspective of trying to lead a uh, growing community, a growing downtown, and preserving historic buildings and properties and people uh, renovating and doing facades to their buildings to make it really pretty. And um, as, as everybody knows, a historic district in a community is draws people. Yes. So um, that's, that was the purpose, and it has really grown over the years. Yeah, it has, and I think it's really important to preserve the historical uh, significance to our cities. You know, some of these cities have been around since a long time, and a lot of our buildings are original and they're old. And it's it's nice to uh, be able to keep the facades nice and to preserve the history. That's right. That's what it's all about. And you go through so many towns that their little downtowns would be so pretty, but they have destroyed the buildings. Yes. Um, one example for us, which was torn down, was our railroad depot. And I uh, have pictures here in the office that show the depot, which would have been beautiful if they had preserved that. Yes. But um, at that time, people were thinking, you know, upgrade to go to the more modern look. Mm -hmm. um, but thankfully, we had uh, 96 Main Street cities in Georgia just a few years back. And this year, we have 108. Nice. Um, so everyone is seeing the benefit of following that four-point approach and... As you know, the uh, assessment brings a lot of detailed information yes. that you have to present to now Department of Community Affairs and the Office of Downtown Development that mandates what we do for our assessment and for a city to remain a Main Street city. So we're actually a state Main Street in 89, and in 2003 we became a national Main Street city. And that's when the assessment came in to play that we had to follow that um, every year to be and eligible. I've, I've seen you do the assessment, of course, uh, yes. because of my uh, involvement with the DVA. I've seen, and it seems like every year the assessment gets a little bit more and more, and I know that that's a big part of, of having to get all those uh, T's crossed and those I's dotted to make sure that the city maintains those accreditations, which is very important. That's true, and a lot of people in our community actually think that the Downtown Valley Association is just uh, doing events. Yeah. 
and it's not just that anymore. It used to be, mm -hmm. um, but it has grown tremendously over the years. And I have been here since uh, 99, so I'm going to my 18th year, I yeah. believe. My calculation <laughs> is correct. And um, it just continues to grow. And people see a benefit of being a part of our organization because of leaders like you and um, our board of directors and our committees, and they're y'all are all volunteers, and it just makes the community really grow and it's special for others to see that we actually have volunteers that's given of their time to help make this program work. That's right. Well, it's all about pride in your community and pride in the city and, you know, pride in maintaining the economic welfare here for, for all of us and our children that are coming up. I mean, they're going to have to be here and then we want to leave it in a good position for them. That's right. One thing that a lot of, of our community doesn't know is how we're funded, and I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Um, the Downtown Valley Association is a membership org, and we now have 160 members. Um, there's different levels of membership that you can choose, and a lot of people say, you know, what benefit is greater for the higher levels? And the way I'd like to explain it to them is that to be a higher level is showing that you want to give back to the community. Not only with your time, but if you can afford to give more, that's great. The only required amount is 120, as you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we have the gold level at 250, the patron level at 500, and the platinum level at 750. And um, those that like our bank, financial institutions, and others in the community, like you and your company, uh, give more because you want to, and you want to see every, our downtown grow in our community. And we're downtown and beyond, not just downtown. So that has helped tremendously. And uh, that part of our financial budget comes from the membership dues. And then our city of Idalia does uh, give us a percentage of the hotel motel tax, um, which we have to use for tourism benefits. Uh, that is mandated that that money has to go to tourism mm -hmm. for us to receive that amount. And then the city uh, general fund gives us a portion, I'd say like half and half for yeah. our budget and then the county gives us a little bit of money so that helps also so that's how our budget is actually uh, created so obviously you know it's apparent that the city and the county all those see uh, DVA and having the Main Street accreditation as a vital part and very important absolutely they've been very supportive over the years and um, and as time goes on they see even more importance in it that's so right. I'm just thankful that they have uh, been on board with what uh, we tried to do back years ago and I know your mother was president in the early years too mm -hmm. and um, so she was one of the leaders in this effort as well. That's right and I'm glad you made a, a good point a while ago that even though it's called the Downtown Valley Association it expands much further than just the downtown area. That's true. Who exactly all can join the DDA? Anyone can be a member. Um, property owners, just uh, friends of Main Street. We have a friend level, which is only $25. And just anyone that wants to give that or more, actually our friends of Main Street have started giving as much as $100 each, yeah. just because they see and believe in what we're doing. And they don't even own a business. They don't own a business. They just want to be a part. And just this past week, I had two new members call. And um, continually people call and say, I want to be a part of what you all are doing. And that's very encouraging. Yes, it is. It sure is. Now, you made a, um, a point a while ago that people, the general misconception was that the DBA was only about events, but we do so much more. Touch base on a little bit more about what the DBA does uh, other than just events. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, the Main Street program. Mm -hmm. um, a Main Street director of a city is supposed to be a 40-hour full-time person. Mm -hmm. um, but in this position, I did the Downtown Valley Association and the Main Street program, which is two entities in one actually, mm -hmm. with only one person on staff. And if I didn't have good leaders like you, the board and uh, promotions and design committees and uh, the city of Idalia, which helps tremendously with some of the manpower that we need for events, because uh, I work under the Main Street program, this is so important. We have to do this in order to be funded by the city. And um, that's actually a full-time position. Yeah. But then you have your events, which DVA does, probably, what, 35 or 40 a year? Yes, a lot. And then 
Now we have the tourism office, which is doing all the events, which I am on that board as well for Alexa Britton, who's the executive director under the CBB. And um, I help her with her events it, here at the stage in different locations that they have things. So it's added work and with the theater that's being renovated, it's very exciting. Yes, it I'm so, so proud that the city saw a need to renovate the theater because it would have been so sad to me to lose the theater because the Main Street City needs a historic theater. That's right, I agree. Now, um, other than just events, uh, the DVA does many things. I mean, there's some of the member benefits. Why don't you just tell us, I know there's a, a whole list of the men benefits of being a member of the Downtown Bay Association, but why don't you just name a few of the main ones? Okay, I would say one of the main ones is that we do referrals. Um, I do a newsletter weekly. We have the Facebook social media networking. Um, anyone that sends me anything, I will post it for them. We can like and share their page. Uh, the newsletter is very popular. I have about 600 email addresses on that blast that we do. Uh, and it goes to all of those 600 and then they forward them on to others. Like with your banks, you've got numerous employees, obviously. So they refer and send them on to their employees as well. Yeah. Um, another thing is we have the coffee before hours once a month and that's very very successful it's a great networking um, time that everyone enjoys uh, we also have Northland communications and cable ad concepts that gives each member a 30-day free ad on their Northland communications role uh, it's all by the asking uh, with 160 members April Renfro is in charge of that with Northland, and of course she's not going to call 160 members, but we just ask anyone that's a member to we provide you with the number that you can call April, and she will come to your business, uh, do a photo shoot or do an ad for you, and run it for 30 days free, which I, I'm thinking is around 150 to $200 in value. Yeah, so that alone, that yeah, alone. the membership pays for that. <laughs> Not to mention the, the, the other networking opportunities, the, the coffee before hours that you talked about. I mean, those are all real good networking opportunities that gets each business who is a member has the opportunity to sign up to have a coffee at their business and to be able to spotlight their business and what they do. That's right. And everyone enjoys the coffee because it's just to come in, get your cup of coffee, a donut or whatever is offered, and go to work. Just fellowship and mingle mm -hmm. with people for a little bit yep. before you go to work. Yeah, that's, that's great. Good. <clears throat> then in addition, of course, we work with the Onion Festival, mm -hmm. which is another committee, and um, that's uh, a year-round full-time job working with this committee, yeah. And um, but it is bringing people to our community, so everyone benefits. Uh, it's not right. just the Onion Festival committee, but we have our brochures that just what, came in yesterday, actually, and I have them in the Main Street office if anyone wants to come get them. Um, in your stores, you can put these out for your customers. Um, we will be distributing these around the community, and Alexa will be sending them to all the welcome centers in the area. So the DVA office is a hub for community or, uh, information for people visiting, you know, Vidalia that wants more information, not just on the Onion Festival committee, but if you look around, I see, um, you know, stuff about businesses that are members where people come in here and get information and pick things up. That's right. We have a lot of people just drop in. <clears throat> Excuse me. When we were downtown on Church Street, uh, people would come in off Interstate 16 and stop because they would see a welcome center. And members can give us the brochures, um, anything about their business, some type of a little incentive like a pen or pencil that's got your name on it. And um, people pick that up and remember as a little souvenir they've been to Vidalia. That's right. So that's very, very good for a member to do. Mm -hmm. um, then they come now to City Hall as we're temporarily located here in the back of City Hall. And um, I have a guest book where our guests sign in. So we have people from everywhere. Well, as I look around, I see some uh, Vida Onion Festival hats. You got the trucker hat and you got the regular one. And there's a bunch of shirts over here. And actually, I'm going to show one of those. I just want people to know that if you want uh, some of these Onion Festival items, you can come here to the DVA office. They're really cool. I think they mm -hmm. did really good with the designs this year. And they can just come here and pick these up from you. You have, uh, as far as shirts yeah. go, you have all kinds of sizes and right. things like that, and youth sizes. Mm -hmm. 
I will so. have. I don't have today, but I will have. Okay. And we so. have the trucker's hat and the other uh, little cap. Yeah, those are nice. So mm -hmm. if you want some of these items for the, the Onion Festival, come by the BV office and pick those up. Now, in addition to the Onion Festival items we just looked at, the hats and the shirts, we also have some more promotional items. I know uh, you've got these uh, ornaments that say Vidalia, Georgia. Now, these are uh, 2016, but I know that there's going to be a new one done every year. Yes, uh, this past year we started the uh, 12 Days of Christmas. Tish Holland was in charge of organizing this event under the Promotions Committee, but it was a tremendous success, and we plan to do uh, 12 Days of Christmas every year with a different ornament, and beginning, of course, with the 2016, as you said. So we feel like this draws people to the downtown to shop, shop local and shop at night. We have two night events. It's, we're open to 8 o'clock. Everyone can come and enjoy music and stroll and visit and shop. And it's just been a great effort for the promotions committee. Good. And it was uh, for the first year, this past year was the first year it was uh, very successful. Yes. And I would like to say Laura Brown is um, the organizer and the chair of the promotions committee. She does a great job because as we mentioned earlier, we have so many events throughout the year. That's right. You've got to pull in committees and volunteers to help make those things be successful. There's just no way that you right. can do it all. That's but right. a couple other items that I saw, and I'm going to grab just to show. Uh, What's Cooking in Vidalia, Georgia's Sweetest Town. It's a cookbook that you can pick up here at the, the DVA office. What's the price on this, Ms. Paula? They're $20. Okay, and the ornaments are? Are 10 Okay, and I think the supply is uh, limited on the, the ornaments, so people need to get in here and go ahead and pick those things up. That's right. We only had a few left from 2016, but we um, plan to sell them until they're gone. And the cookbook itself has a lot of history in it. As we were talking earlier about Main Street, it gives you a lot of the old city look and even the dirt streets. I've got a couple of pictures in there. Uh, Promotions Committee did the cookbook back in 2013, I believe, but we've actually had it reprinted twice. So it's still a big seller throughout the year, not only um, at Christmas. And at Last Onion Festival, we sold five cases. Wow. Yeah. Well, they make great gift ideas. Yes. And, and last is this uh, Vade Onion cutting board. It's got the Vade Onion on there in Vade, Georgia. Again, uh, these are all great gift ideas, and you can just swing by the DVA office and pick up some of these. Uh, I found that people that live out of town, even though they don't live in Vade, a lot to receive these things as gifts. That's true. And at the Onion Festival, we fry onion rings. Uh, on the cutting board, this one doesn't have it, but uh, we put the recipe on the back. This is just one that does not have the recipe. That's right. Uh, but last Onion Festival, we sold five cases of these nice. to tourists and guests because every time they would come to get onion rings, they would say, what's your recipe? So we decided to put the recipe on the back and when they ask that, we just say, here, you can buy this for $25. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's uh, been a great seller. And we've actually just reordered these for the Onion Festival this year. Good, good. And I have no doubt now, when the Onion Festival uh, comes around, the DVA actually has a location where it sets up and does things on the capacity of the DVA. Tell us about that. Yes, and I'd like to especially thank Farmers Insurance on the corner of Jackson and Highway 280. Uh, we had to relocate this year from the opposite corner on the First Baptist property. And Alan Morris uh, was gracious and let us use the corner right there at Farmers Insurance. So we will be located there cooking 400 pound of onion rings. As of right now, we're planning to cut 400 pound. And we make our own batter and you can taste and uh, we have hot dogs as well, tea and lemonade. And then the souvenirs, which Ross and I have talked about earlier, uh, we'll have a tent set up there as a hospitality for the Onion Festival Committee uh, to provide information of where to go for the different venues and um, to sell souvenirs for the Onion Festival Committee. And all that's coming up uh, really soon. And what are the dates for the yes. Onion Festival this year? April 27th. Okay. April. It actually starts on the 26th on Thursday night. And... Um, with the children's parade and goes through Sunday because this year we'll have um, an air show not with the Blue Angels but with Tora 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 which is um, my, my mind's gone blank which is uh, Pearl Harbor reenactment nice. Tora 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 that ought to be something really interesting to see it should be and I think it'll draw a lot of people they say it does well, uh, you know, the Onion Festival always brings a lot of people to Vidalia. The DVA is very involved with it and intertwined 
and uh, it's a weekend pack full of things for families families to do. So, you know, I definitely think people should check that out if they don't know much about it. Absolutely. And with the merchants downtown, it's a very uh, good opportunity for them to open their doors. Uh, the streets will be closed on Friday and Friday night, Saturday and Saturday night. But just look at it like this. It's, uh, people love just to get out and stroll. Mm -hmm. So even with the streets being closed, everyone can come in and still shop stop and eat, sit on the benches, just enjoy the beautiful atmosphere of downtown, then come to the stage on Friday night and on Saturday. And there will be vendors on the street as well. That's so right. it's going to be right here and concerts on Friday night and Saturday night. Nice. Good. Well, it's going to get real busy around Vida. It is. <laughs> Not that already. It's, it's already busy for you. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> now, uh, something else that I think, you know, that kind of touches close to my heart and is important to me is the big Veterans Day event. Yes. the DDA does every year. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, we've been doing the veterans event for many, many years. It began, um, I would say, 15, 20 years ago as a picnic in the park with 30 or 40 people, hot dogs and that type thing. And then over the years, it's grown and it got so big that we went to uh, the First Methodist Church and held it there for many years. And then it kind of outgrown, has outgrown that property so we went then to the community center and uh, our Roth has kind of been a leader of the veterans lunch and I have to give him credit for that because that was his heart and he wanted to do something for the veterans um, we asked for volunteers for gifts door prizes um, Roth at the Masonic Lodge is responsible or takes the responsibility, I shouldn't say. It shouldn't be all of his responsibility. It's a team effort. Yeah, <laughs> it is. But he loves uh, to do the meat that's provided that day for the luncheon. And uh, we've asked Food World, used to be Harvest, to do the side dishes. And then our American Legion Ladies does desserts. And we actually feed close to 500 now. Yeah, wow. From 30 in a park to 500 at the community center. Yes, just imagine that. And it's, it's just really growing. And um, I've often wondered as it continues to grow. Um, I know we've lost a lot of our veterans. Um, we don't have many of the older guys with us anymore. But how, where are we going to go for the larger crowd? Yeah. Well, it's definitely drawing a crowd. And from being so involved over the last uh, few years, you know, you meet and you mingle and you talk to people, and it seems like every year people are coming a little bit from further and further away to come mm -hmm. to attend the event here. I know there's other events in other places, but this one's obviously uh, very special to people or, or well-known and received because people are coming and driving from different areas to come and be a part of it. That's true. And merchants, uh, you, we ask you to give door prizes, as I mentioned, uh, so always step up to the plate and do that because it goes for a good cause. Uh, we have our Girl Scouts that help, our Boy Scouts, uh, the American Legions all participate. Um, lots of the ROTC, and I don't want to forget them, the Junior ROTC guys come to do the presentation of the colors. We have a great program every year, um, usually a guest speaker um, with music. Mm -hmm. Someone does some patriotic music. So it's very much enjoyable, and the veterans truly love it. And it makes you feel like you have really, really uh, been a part of their lives when you participate in this event. Yes, that's correct. Well, we, do, we owe them a lot. And we, we do. And we show appreciation. We do, absolutely. Uh, one more event I want to spotlight because I think it's important and it's good to know that people that may want to join the DVA, the, the downtown are, you know, chats. What are the downtown chats? Yes, we have the chats every uh, quarter. Mm -hmm. um, the first quarter is in March, which w is coming up March 23rd. Um, we will have our first for the year. We try to get all the merchants to come and to stay in the loop of what's going on with the downtown and beyond. Mm -hmm. Because, as we said earlier, so many of our members are not just downtown. Um, you That's can right. be a member in Augusta. We have several from Augusta and several from other places. So we can help you from anywhere that you might be. Um, but saying that, it's just um, something that we all need to think about is participating, uh, whether you have a business or not. It's like anything else, you, you get out of it what you put into it. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I've often thought when people ask what the benefit is, not say, you know, what's in it for me? but what can I do for my community and what can I do to give back 
um, because obviously if you have a business, if you um, don't give back, you know, the people in the community will not support you. That's right. So especially with um, our eateries and those that have service businesses like you and different ones, um, it's very important to have people to stay local and shop, shop small. That's what we're about. That's right. And I believe it's just as important uh, in staying humble to pay for the blessings that you yourself has received as a business. That's true. Or individuals. True. So, well, I know that uh, there's this membership brochure that if anybody wants to come by the uh, the DBA office and pick one up, if they have any interest in becoming a member of the Downtown by Day Association, which I would strongly encourage, you can come pick one of these up, but you could also come see Miss Paula or give her a call. What's That's your phone right. number, Miss Paula? I can be reached at 537-8033. That's the Main Street office number. If I'm not in, just leave me a message and I will call you back as soon as possible. And also, they can find Downtown by Day Association on Facebook uh, right. and the website. That's right. What's the website address? Uh, www.downtownbydayassociation.org. That's right, and you'll be glad to answer any questions anybody has. Uh, come in, go over the member benefits and uh, the whole the whole shebang. That's right, and we do have a blog, actually. Tammy Gibbs, who works with Ross, is our social media specialist, and she posts things on the blog for us and uh, keeps the website kind of up-to-date. And it, it may not be quite up-to-date this year, but I'm working on it. Yeah. Um, we've got some things on there, but uh, we like to refresh it every There's once so in a while. To do, always. Yes, it is. <laughs> Well, Paula, I want to personally thank you, uh, number one, for allowing us to come in and film this episode of Simply by Day of the Day. But personally, thank you for the hard work and dedication that you've uh, given to the, the city of Idea and the DVA over the years. It's always been a pleasure personally to work with you, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Ross. It's always been a pleasure to work with you. You've been a great leader, and um, I just feel honored to have been associated with you over the years. Well, I feel the same way. Thank you so much. I thank appreciate you. it. Well, there you have it, everyone. If you're not familiar with the Downtown Vida Association, come in and grab a brochure. And if you're on the fence about becoming a member, let me encourage you to go ahead and take that step and become a member. Uh, a lot of pride and things come into being a member of the DBA, and I don't think that you'll regret ever doing that. There you have it. Simply Vida episode number 14, the Downtown Vida Association. I'm Ross Kelly, CEO and Realtor with Lovin's Realty. We'll see you next time.